What you achieved last night, for me that was different, was that I felt like I was in community. I was in a Native event, even though, you know, it was all about Natives and it was how that the Native Cultural Center, um, you yourself, you're not Native, right? No, so um, from you, I would expect something that was very professional, very straightforward, and you know, it was followed a linear line, but in, not, in, in Native community, there is no linear line to follow because it, it's like oral tradition based. It, it's all about community and every person has their place and, and they know what they're supposed to do and everybody knows what that person is supposed to do. And, and uh, so when an event happens, you look to each other to, and, and everybody knows when they're supposed to go and what they're supposed to do, so they do it. And, um, and it just doesn't follow a linear line, it's more orga organic. And for, for me, the, that moment was shown when the, when the elder got up and felt comfortable enough in a non-native event to be able to bring forward his native teachings just like that without even thinking about it. Because there, there have been events where elders have gone and you know, they'll, uh, they'll be sitting back and if I happen to be near them, they'll be saying, oh, they, they should be, you know, they'll, they'll tell someone else and then someone else will go to the director or who's it, whoever's in charge, find them and say, this is what should have been done or whatever, or this is what you should be doing now and they'll either do it or they'll get up and apologize and say, oh, you know, I didn't know. But no, the, the, the elder himself got up and said, excuse me, you know, this is how it's done. Uh, because this event has happened, one of the dancers lost a piece of his regalia. I have to get up and say something about this, and and this is why, and you know, and this is what I had. And he just didn't even think about it. He felt at home, and and I was, I was. That's that's when the whole thing changed for me. I felt very at peace, and I thought. Okay, this is the moment I've been waiting for as a Native person who's been living in an urban society for 20 years. Uh, I've been waiting for that crossover of the culture and I felt that's what happened last night. And it was, it was very touching because there were a lot of non-Natives in, in the audience and I could see they were all... The whole feeling for them changed as well at that moment because they could see uh, the seriousness of the culture, you know, and, um, most people don't see that and, and to know that the first half of the event was all about what you might call protocol, it's actually just the way we do things, you know, you have to do things in a respectful manner and, um, and that was done. I came late, so I'm just starting my, my carving. So I think I'll have to come for the rest of the Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm bit off a bit more than I can chew. But I was determined to do a frog because uh, we live out in the forest. And when I see them hopping across the road, in my headlights in the fall. I know that it's the start of a very spiritual time. And then when I see them going the other way <laughs> in the springtime, or I hear them, I know that people have gone through a time of prayer and meditation. And, um, and summer's coming. So I I'm really fond of frogs, so that, that was what I was decided I, I, I needed to do. My name is Rolly Holland. I live in Ladysmith and I've been on Vancouver Island for six years now, uh, originally from Calgary. And I, today, I, I have some experience as a carver, but I enjoyed it. I learned a lot. 
Wonderful day. Wonderful day. Actually, I heard about it by word of mouth. I did not see it in the paper, although I understand it was in the paper. And uh, I phoned. And actually, I dropped by here a couple of weeks ago, too, and picked up a little blurb on it and uh, just decided to try to participate. Well, I think there should be. I, I think it was a great, ex for me, it was a great experience. I think there should be more intercultural exchange opportunities. Uh, I have not done a lot of this kind of thing before and uh, I think if you want to have a well-functioning, I mean we're obviously a multicultural society all the way across Canada and uh, with the immigrant populations we have and, and the uh, indigenous populations we, we need to be a totally functioning functioning society and how else can you do it except to share experiences makes sense to me um, I I found it to be very or pleasant like I like um, working with wood just kind of brings me to a completely different place and kind of makes me forget about like everything that's going on in life and, to start out, it was like I didn't really know what to do, to, and then it just all kind of fell into place and started looking better the more I worked on it. Yeah. Near the end of the day when I started getting the paint on there, it's when it finally started taking shape for me, like I could actually tell it's a bear after I put the paint on it. I'm Garth Schmallenberg. And I um, live here in the Cowichan Valley, a uh, fairly new arrival from Ontario, and uh, I'm the executive director for Partners for Prosperity and uh, coordinator for the Arts for Development Foundation. I think that, uh, that arts is really an essential part of building culture, it's important for building society, uh, it's important for the development of, of a human being as a whole. And I think it's, it's an essential piece, and, and it's a lot of fun besides all of that. Um, so we get to learn about uh, arts that we didn't know about before and get to participate in, in cultural activities that we are maybe not as familiar with. Uh, and so it's, it's wonderful. I really uh, have enjoyed uh, this activity and many others here that are intercultural. Um, only this afternoon at lunch I was able to uh, uh, participate in the storytelling and also at the uh, opening of the festival. Um, I don't remember the gentleman's last name, Richard. Wagamese. Wagamese. He was a fabulous storyteller and uh, we laughed so hard and I would really encourage others if they get the opportunity to uh, to listen to those kinds of stories. It's just, it's, it's an amazing art and um, very educational at the same time. And one of the things I notice is that many of the, the um, native stories are, uh, they have a theme and a moral to them that always uh, help in some way. Yeah. It's a wonderful way to relax and concentrate and uh, really focus on on something and uh, and then you get a nice hopefully a nice result at the end of it but uh, whatever the result is it's nice anyway uh, so yeah I, I, I enjoyed it uh, immensely I really uh, really liked it and uh, we'll probably um, follow it up by getting myself a at least a, a carving kni knife I don't know if I'll go as deep into it as uh, becoming an expert carver but uh, Killer whale represents long and full life, not so much in years, but how you live those years. Living life to its fullest at every possible moment, like you're doing today. Living life to its fullest. You're trying something new, experimenting, enjoying. And with the killer whale, when you see him out in the water, <coughs> usually they're not alone, they're in their families. They have all their children with them brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, in families of 15 to 90, 15 to 100. And they all look after each other. They all 
help each other, how to feed each other, the killer way of long and full life. Like my brother was talking about the salmon earlier, there's a little salmon design here that you can put on here too. He represents survival, continuity, fertility of the mind, body, and spirit. Because our people, they depend upon the continuity and fertility of the salmon for their survival. And still do it at some time. But much harder to get fish. The amount of fish one needs for a family to survive now, year round, it's harder to get it from the rivers like they used to because they don't. They aren't coming back to the rivers. Maybe they're going somewhere else because they don't like the taste and the smell of the river. That's how they find their home. They taste it, they smell it, they remember that. And when they get back to it, when they get to the mountain, oh, there's home. They go up. So maybe they're not liking the taste or the smell of the river anymore. But that's a sample. There's another little design here it's called the frog. Wachas the frog. Wachas is hot on looking for frog. Wachas. Say wachas. That middle, <coughs> middle sounds like when you're clearing your throat a little bit. Or a rough H. Wachas. Wachas the frog. This is wachas the frog. He represents new beginnings. Springtime. When you, that's when you hear, that's when the frog will come out. The beginning of spring, right? You hear him coming out, coming out of his uh, mud home that he's been in all the winter. Come out, he'll be singing, coming out singing to the world. Spall the raven. Spall the raven. That's one of the easier ones to say. Spall the raven. Swatsali. <coughs> Swatsali the hummingbird. Swatsali. And there's Spaath the bear. Spat up the bear. Spat up the bear. And Stikeya. Stikeya. The wolf. Stikeya. The wolf. My name is Sally Hart. I'm a elementary school teacher, presently at Alexander School. I've been to uh, one uh, storytelling session. Uh, so, no, that's not right. I've been to two storytelling sessions. The first one at the opening when we had uh, Richard come and then the second one in the theater and that was with uh, some of our Penelicut elders That's where my granny was from, my late granny so that was really nice for me to be able to attend that. The interesting thing about hearing the different storytellers is there are so many wonderful versions of the same legends to have this wealth of storytellers come, three and four and five different other versions, to enrich the total legend experience is just uh, a beautiful experience for me. <coughs> my father is First Nations, my mother was non-First Nations, and so I kind of am on this circus ride of one foot on one color horse and another foot on another color horse and I'm riding along on this cultural uh, circus ride and um, realizing that there are two entirely different mindsets between our First Nations culture and our non-First Nations culture. The mindset is so, the life set is so different. An event like this uh, is um, a good opportunity to start the dialogue to get people from all walks of the community and all backgrounds talking and walking together with some sort of vision of enlarging that dialogue and um, promoting understanding, more acceptance, more understanding and you know acceptance of the fact that even though you do not understand but having that ability to accept that you don't understand and that's okay so again uh, it's, it's not a matter of oh, I'm going to learn everything I can about my neighbor and then everything's going to be fine because that's not going to happen you're never going to learn anything about everything about your neighbor but you can learn something about yourself and 
become a more open person and bridge some of those gaps that we have.